Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036369, 0703 768119. Email address lsmedia at or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. You will remember that as we began to meet at various points, there was one matter that is very paramount. It is a matter of preparing for revival, preparing for what God wants to do in our nation and in the nations uh, around us. And God kept speaking very, very consistently that he has no problem, that he has no problem with power. And that all that is needed to overrun the earth is sufficiently available in heaven. The only difficulty, the scarcity, is the inavailability of usable vessels. And that if we are seriously praying and expecting another visitation of God, that is capable of turning the nation and turning it around, we then need to begin to prepare very, very deliberately to raise vessels for revival. And in the course of time, we saw that if God is ever going to respond to the need to change the terrain of South Africa, and again as we travel into different parts of Southern Africa and East Africa, the need to multiply men and women that can bear the coming glory is a very critical need. So you will remember that at the end of our meeting in 207, we spent very critical time of discussion on discipleship. And some persons busted out and said, we want to be discipled. By last year when we came to that point again, we decided that we would not let it end there. We decided that people that came from different parts of the country were going to follow this on. Praise the Lord. And we continue to remind you that it's not about forming another denomination. It is not another denomination called discipleship that we are wanting to form here. We are just concerned about raising vessels emptied for God, emptied of self, so that Christ can find containers to bear his life and his glory into the larger body of Christ all over the land. We don't want you to forget that. Right? We already know 
that the kind of men we need to prepare, please listen, they are not all going to be on the pulpit as pastors. Some of them will be pastors. But where God wants to raise men and manifest his glory, is going to cut across. We will need men whom God could ride, you know, as an ass into the government, into uh, offices, into the traditional ruler councils and all of this, into the uh, hospital situation, into the universities and the colleges, where we need to do something that is not just, we are not just locked up in religion. We are not just talking about people that are locked up inside church buildings. We are looking for people whom Jesus can ride upon and make a difference in different segments of the community and society. Is that okay? So we know that what God is setting us about is an elaborate matter. And as we were praying, you know, I felt, God, what are you talking about this? God is saying, the vessels that can overrun this nation, we have not got them enough yet. So, the instruction he brought to us for this year was, make this valley full of ditches. Make this valley full of ditches. Now, that's what we are going to be laboring on as our own obedience to God in preparation for the divine visitation we are expecting in South Africa and in other parts of Southern Africa. He said, make this valley full of ditches. We'll be speaking about that in the main meeting itself. But it's very important for me to begin to say to you that what is in the heart of God for each one of you here is very, very elaborate. Very elaborate. And we don't want you to uh, lose sight that this is not just one religious activity. This is not just one of those things that people are doing. We are looking forward that God who honors his promise we honor his word. And that in our lifetime, the land will be filled with correct men and women that can stand out there and bear Christ into the nooks and cranny of the nation and of the nations. Praise the Lord. So, as part of digging ditches, I don't know how many of you, oh, I don't know. Is any of you, you have known about well before? The well, where we fetch water from? Eh? All right. When do they normally dig wells? If they are looking for wells that will carry water for a long time. Eh? It's drawn during the dry season. You don't dig wells during the heavy rain season. The reason is because you won't get a correct water bearing wells. Shallow is already filled up. So you will be thinking that you've got a good well. Are you, are you hearing me? And when you dig wells, when it is rainy, you are deceived. Because when the dry season comes, all that you do will be what? Will have been dried. Because there will be nothing there. And sometimes, 
even because the ground was very, very soft, the wells easily does what? Collapse. So the well diggers, please listen, they, they work very, very hard before the rains come. Are, are, are you hearing me? Correct well diggers or those who want to make good boreholes, they must do it at the height of dry season. Otherwise, the wells they will get cannot carry water. So when God says, make this valley full of ditches, we understand that the work that needed to be done is to prepare people even when the rains have not yet fully come so that their lives, their character are already prepared and properly set for the rains. Praise the Lord. If we wait, if we should waste time and we didn't do it, let me tell you two things that will happen. Even if God we say, well, you have not prepared vessels. I will still send the rain. The rain will not benefit the land. The rain will only bring erosion. And it will not last. It will not last. It will just sweep. And after a little while, what will happen to it? It will dry up again. And it will leave the land with gullies. And the land will be more disfigured than what we were looking for. So we saw that the critical need to, to dig ditches, to prepare wells, to raise containers into which God can pour is urgent. Actually, I found the matter of multiplying disciples more urgent. Uh, in the past few months, uh, I have traveled, I'm traveling here and there now, and I'm overwhelmed. In fact, I'm restless. Uh, what is making me restless is that everywhere I see God saying, I'm about to visit this land, but there are not enough containers that I can pour into that will carry what I want to bring to this land in a very, very deliberate way. I found that that is a very critical labor now. And just to say to you that the Lord is urging, is urging. It's making us to overstretch, if you may say, ourselves. Because it looks like this is what must happen at this time. And the passages I want to read with you just for this opening charge is to allude to this cry. To this cry. But before I read the passage, the main the passages, the second point I want to raise is that the The, the continuity of a well and the capacity of a well is directly proportional to its depth. That is confusing. I said the capacity of a well 
and the duration of it, that is, how long can it serve and continue to carry water? And how much water you can fetch out of a well? So I'm talking about capacity and I'm talking about duration. I say it is directly proportional to the depth of that well. Are you understanding? A very deep well will yield more water for more for longer time. While all other wells have dried, a very deep well will continue to release fresh water. Is that okay? Now, before I go from there, I want you to still know, and the purity the purity of the water that a well can yield. So I'm talking about three parameters about the well. Now, what is the first parameter? The capacity, that is quantity of water you can fetch out of it. Duration, how long can it continue to serve? And then the purity of the water it yields they are all directly proportional to what is depth. It's depth. I'm going somewhere. I want you to catch that. I'm going. Are, you, are you with me to this point? Okay. Now, but the depth of a well, the depth of a well is directly a function of how much it has been evacuated. Eh? Do you understand that now? You do understand that. A well's depth eh, is not dependent on the width. Now let me stand up so you can see me now. Now, when you want a well that gives you pure water, eh, that gives you a long serving capacity and that can stay for a long time, you don't dig it wide. It's not the width that makes a well effective. What makes the well effective is the depth. And depth depends not on creating more space, it's not white space, but evacuating, evacuating, evacuating. Evacuating. Are we together? Okay. Now, evacuation that produces a very deep well is a continual digging almost of the same spot. Do you understand? And pulling out the debris. And the more you do so, the more you discover that the well is beginning to spring forth water that is sparkling. Eh? And if you fetch from the well and it's about to dry, what do you do to the well again? You dig it deeper. You dig it deeper. You don't go and start somewhere else. Because it's not the question of location that is the problem. What's the problem? It's depth. Now, what do I mean by this? What do I mean by this? And this is why I want you to be listening to me. Number one, if 
you are likely. I use the word likely. Not because I'm not sure. But because it depends on you. If you are likely to be one of those enduring containers of the fresh springs that God wants to release in our generation. It will require a digging, a digging deep, a digging deeper into your life. Now we dig a well not because the soil is particularly bad. Actually, when you have dug off the surface of what you call the top soil, where there is much of contamination and wrong things, you actually get into the deep soil that is pure. Is that alright? The soil is good. But the point is that the soil, even though it's good, is natural. Is that okay? It does not, it blocks the water. So what do we do now? We begin to evacuate it. We begin to evacuate it. We begin to evacuate it. Now when you evacuate it to a point, there will be water. You can stop. You can enjoy the water for some time. You can fetch the water. You can use it. You can stop. But when you stop, at a particular depth, you have also limited the duration, the capacity, and the purity. Is that okay? All right. So, the need to keep extending the duration of your usefulness, your capacity of usefulness, and the, the purity of your usefulness demands that discipleship digging of your life. It's not because you have a problem. It's not because you are not nice. It's not because you are not immediately useful for some superficial things. But because there is need for duration, there's need for expanded capacity of usefulness, and there's need for purity. Because of that need, it becomes a very critical mandate to keep digging. To keep digging. So you see, when you meet some people, they are being helped. Their exposure to discipleship has helped them a bit. They are even being used there and there. They are preaching everywhere. To the point I say, well, ah, what do I need again? I've got it. It's not that they have not got something. But they have got something that will soon dry. They have got something that will soon finish. The duration is not much. And they have got something that the purity of it is limited because of surface. So you see, why am I particularly concerned that we need to sit on those of you that are desiring, that have already stepped into discipleship? Is because depth, depth, determines your capacity. 
Death determines your duration. How long will you be useful? How long? And then, how pure your usefulness will be for a long time will depend on this. And it is not expanded. Do you understand that now? It's not about, okay, let's, let's dig, dig wider here. You see, if you dig wider here, honestly speaking, if you dig from this point to this point, it will appear to you as if you have dug. But the truth is that water doesn't depend on width. It depends on what? On depth. So even if you dug from here to here, so wide, you are still on one surface. So that's why we talk about water level. We deal with levels. Not space. Do you get what we are talking about? So, instead of some of us sometimes, you might think that the need is to have wide coverage of knowledge. To the point that someone says, ah, we have no we have no discipleship now. Let's talk about prosperity. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. And I smile. I say, what do you know? Because we are just talking about width. And width doesn't produce water. It is depth. No matter how wide a trough is, once the water level goes lower than that trough, what will happen to the whole trough? As wide as it is, they are dry. So when God begins to give us a mandate on the issue of preparing Vessels, durable vessels, vessels with capacity, and vessels that can yield the purest of, of the living spring, it becomes critical to focus and dig deeper into each life. Are we together? That's the purpose. That's why your discipleship experience has to be a deliberate digging, a deliberate digging deep into every segment of your life. When we finish digging out the topsoil, when we finish digging out the rubbish. The rubbish that even you yourself, you don't like. When we finish digging out the rubbish of misbehavior, of sin, of the things that Mr. Flesh has produced. That surface. Then we get to the inside soil that honestly speaking is not dirty. Do you understand? But it blocks the water. So what do we do to that also? We take it out. Now you dig even beyond the red soil. Then you get to the places where you start meeting small, 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 small white stones. White. To the point that people say, ah, these are precious stones. Precious stones, but they still block the water. So what do we still do to that? We still dig it. 
So now let's read a few scriptures together in order to press into that. Now in John chapter 8, in John chapter 8, let's all turn to John 8, verse 30, 31, 32. As he spoke these words, many, many believed on him. Have you seen that? Many believed. But I was particularly touched with the response of Jesus to those who believed. Then said Jesus to those Jews which did what? Believed on him. And see what he says. If you do what? If you do what? Now, I know NIV says if you abide. Would you like to read NIV for us? Quickly verse 30, 31. Alright. Now, when you use the word abide, there's a very powerful understanding there. But I would like rather to use the Old King James. How did Old King James put verse 31? Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, Yes. If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Uh huh. Now, I want you to see that verse 31 in the Old King James Version did not end with a full stop. Did you notice that? Check, check your Bible. I have another version here that is English Standard Version and it also didn't end with a full stop. It ended with a comma. Did you see? Sorry, sorry. Maybe you are carrying. So, the, the, how did NIV end? Did it also end with a comma? Eh? All right. Now, all I was trying to note with you before we press this out is the fact that before you can get the the benefit of your encounter with Jesus before it can become something you see Jesus said to them to those who believed already he said if you continue If you continue in my word, you know the word, when they use the word continue, what will be the meaning of continue? Eh? If you, if you grow on, if you, if you persist, if you press on, If you continue, not those who follow to a point and stop, not those who were excited and say, Ah, hallelujah, I got it, and they stopped, not those who quickly came and said, I've got something, let's go somewhere again. It is not wideness. It is levels that determine water supply. Is that okay? So when it says, if you continue in my word, then, what's the meaning of the word then? Eh? 
Only after that, only then, shall you be my disciple indeed. You see, I'm okay. I'm happy. Many of you say we are disciples. We are disciples from uh, Mtata. We are disciples from uh, Jobe. We are disciples for this. And I am listening to you with suspicion. I'm suspecting. Because that's not how Jesus put it. Some of you have only believed. Some of you have just been very impressed. Some of you, by the grace of God, say, Ah, I like what I like those teachings. I like it. That's okay. Some of you have been blessed with the first touch. And you're already good. And you feel yes. But you see, when Jesus saw people that believed on him, people that were attracted to him, people that were already, you know, you know, excited about him, he looked at them and said, look, if you continue in my word, some have not continued. You see, many have come to a good point according to them. They say, I've been blessed. I've attended that meeting and I thank God for it. And in their mind, they thought that since they have already taught something, that that's okay. But Jesus doesn't say it like that. He said, then, are you my disciples Indeed. Now, you see, if he stopped there, it would have been okay. But then, did you see he now continued with one sentence? And you shall know the truth. When shall you know the truth? When you continue in my word. <laughs> oh my God, am I confusing you? I can hear someone say, oh, I know the truth, I know the truth. Yes, I do. I'm not arguing with you. Maybe you know the truth at a level. Maybe the truth that you have known is a comparative truth with all the problems and confusions that you have gone through before this time. It's okay. But if you continue in my word. So I found that when I meet people and say, well, how long is this discipleship class going to last? Can we do it for three months? You see? When I meet, when I go up here and say, oh, we have a discipleship program. I say, what is it? He said, you know, 12 weeks. You know, we have gone through discipleship 12 weeks. And it looks interesting that somebody gives you a 12 weeks something and he gives you a certificate and says you are disciples. That completely negates what Jesus says here. He said, if you continue in my word, if you keep digging into my word, if you persevere and persist and press on into my word, then are you my disciples indeed and you shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. Brothers and sisters, we thank God that you have shown great interest. Amen? We thank God that you have traveled everywhere. We thank God that something seemed to have attracted you. But when will you be his disciples indeed? 
When? When you continue, if you continue in my word. As you see me here, you know what I'm doing? I am continuing. I have been digging into this thing for years. But I have not have not come to a point where I can say nothing more to dig. I found Jesus inexhaustible well that you see if God helps and you strike at a point some water comes and it's good and people are blessed. People are already talking about it. People are drinking about it. People are very excited to say, praise God, we have been blessed. Oh, we have been blessed. I was at Uganda with uh, Richard. And the little thing we were saying in Uganda was so big in the ears of the people and they were blessed. Abi, some of the brothers who came with, they said they were blessed. But to me, <laughs> To me, I say, ah. I say, but this this surface. They say, no, that's great. Because you see, for me, I was saying that ah, there's need to go deeper. But I must tell you, you will not be his disciples indeed. So this is the issue. We are reading and I just want to state that so that when we will be, because I will be speaking to you once a while on this matter. Because if we are looking for durable containers, durable wells with inexhaustible capacity and with ever pure water release for South Africa. Are you understanding? It will only happen if you do what? If you continue in my word. Listen, if you stop somewhere, it will look like, yes, something has happened. But before you know it, number one, it will dry. Number two, it will be contaminated. Number three, it will not yield enough. I want to, are you listening to me at all? And Listen, we are praying for something that is durable and has capacity that can service South Africa. And do you not know? You don't understand. Maybe because you are inside South Africa, you may not know the complications of South Africa. You may not know that the line that South African leadership has taken, if God does not intervene with something serious, we are going to produce a very wild, untamable society in a few years. And if it is the kind of messages that is on the TV, on the thing that we are hoping we sustain this country, you will soon wake up to realize a nation where religion is going to be sidelined and put in a corner. Where secularism And human rights, are you hearing me? And all kinds.
kind of, you know, systems that is constantly taking God out of the center will increase. So you see the urgency of raising disciples in South Africa is so heavy on my own heart. Maybe you don't understand. You know, sometimes when you are in a place, you know, sometimes if you go to the latrine, if you go into the pit latrine, eh, and you sit there for about five minutes, by the time you have settled there for five minutes, you can even be reading your newspaper there. You know why? You get accustomed to the odor. It doesn't smell to you again. The danger of being settled, you lose your sensitivity. You lose your sense of sharpness. And if God does not send us help, we have the tendency to be swept over before we know. So the need to continue, as I said, if you continue in my word, then, when? Then. Now. Now. Then. That's very important. Then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth. And what will the truth do? The truth will set you free. So the need to continue. So now let's trace the word continue just for another uh, five minutes before we read the final passage and we stop. In James chapter 1, I want you to get quickly to James 1, verse 22 up to 25. But be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man. Beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholds himself and goeth his way. And straight away, what happens? He forgets what manner of man he was. I want you to hear me very well. Are you following the Bible? I want you to follow because these are very critical issues that must must characterize our discipleship if we want to get something out of it. If you are going to profit and if by the grace of God you will become the answer that we are pleading with God to make you for the nation. And for the nations. Look at it. He said, For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, for he beholds himself and goes his way, and straight away forgets what manner of man he was. But who saw Look at into the perfect law of liberty. Are you there? Whoso looks into the perfect law of liberty and does what? And continues therein. He be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This man 
When he said, this man, which man? This man, this one. You see, many people, oh, many people are doing many things and they are all there and all of this. And you wonder why there's not much progress. And you know, sometimes you even bring some of us into a problem. You know the problem you bring some of us into? People are looking at your life and they say, what is all this that you are doing? Why are you wasting? You are just confused. You know why they are saying you are confused? Because you have followed for years. But you are still on the surface. And I told you that water does not depend on width. What does it depend? On depth. You are at the same level even though you have been around for years. Just at the same level. And people are wondering, what is it all about? He said, but whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty. And I'm telling you the truth. You shall know the truth and the truth will do what? We set you free. That's the perfect law of liberty. Look, look brother. If I know anything else that can make you, that can bring you into liberty. Honestly speaking, will I hide it from you? What do I gain? So you see, whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty. And I tell you, this is the law of liberty. This is what will make you what you have been longing for. It will set you free. But unfortunately, do you know what happens? You look into it. Then you, you go away. And as you look into it, intermittently, you forget what manner of man you are. So you remain the same. Say such a man will not be blessed. Which man will be blessed in all his deeds? This man that looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continues daring. He be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This man, this man, not another, shall be blessed. So you see, as we begin to talk about discipleship, who will discipleship bless? This man, who continues daring, not being a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in all his deeds. Not those who look intermittently, who jump here, who jump there, who are doing this, who are doing that, who are digging this one, digging this one, Digging this one, digging this one. He digs two feet here. After digging two feet, I say, let's not just dig the only, only this place. Let's dig another two feet here. 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 And he has dug two feet here, 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 two feet. Everywhere, two, two, two feet. Excuse me. What is his total depth? It's two feet. That's the confusion you don't understand. You don't understand. Even if you dig one mile wide, two feet, your depth is two feet. The man that dug just a little space and dug six feet deep in terms of water 
is better than you. When the dry season comes and the water level goes beyond two feet, even though your dog one mile, all the one mile will be equally dry when at the same time. So demand that dog into six feet down, but only dog around three feet. He will still be drinking water. So I'm asking you, this man shall be blessed in his deed who looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continues daring, he be not a forgetful hearer. So when will discipleship be a blessing to you? It, it doesn't benefit those who are intermittent. Are we together? It doesn't benefit those who look now. And as they look, they say, ah, I like that thing. And they quickly go somewhere. You know the truth is that they forget immediately what manner of persons they are. Familiarity is not the blessing. It's depth. It's continuity that makes you his disciples indeed. So, during this meeting, one of the things I like to press on you is to ask you how deep you want to go. And how long do you want to continue? Because I know you are used, I know you are used to going for some meetings. Is that all right? And somebody says something and you say, Yes, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. I am blessed, hallelujah, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. You are used to that. And after four days, that one is finished and you are looking for another. And because we don't, nobody measures follow up. Nobody. People are more excited about the event, but they are not concerned about the hereafter of it. So you are so busy, but it will be a waste. We need to find out. Is there a continuity until you become a blessing to your generation? Until your progress are you understanding? Until your, your, your progress I think Paul was telling Timothy something like this also. In 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 16. Can somebody read for me? 1 Timothy 4, 15, and 16. Please read very quickly. That's very quickly, yes? Meditate upon these things. Uh-huh. Give thyself only to them. Yes. That thy profiting may appear to all. That your profiting may appear to all. Yes. Take heed unto thyself. Take heed to yourself. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Continue, continue in them. Yes. And those. All right. You see, for your profiting to appear to all, and I want to tell you, if there's no profit in this thing, it's better to stop it. And I want to tell you that some people, what they are waiting for, are you hearing me? What they are waiting for is to see if there's any profiting that comes out of this thing. Some are very, very 
pessimistic. You know they are pessimistic. And what is their pessimism? They are saying, this thing that you are going up and down, they are deceiving you. You will get nothing out of it. Some say, this one has only come to scatter your church. As you are following him like this, when he has finished you, you will know. <laughs> Some are sitting afar off, they are saying, hmm, you better watch it, you are moving too close to that thing. To them, there's a question in their mind. Will any prophet come out of it? God himself is concerned about your profiting appearing to all. But when will your profit become evident, become visible when you continue? But you see, what will make your profit not to come out is the intermittent Hey, let me do it now. Ah, I'm not sure. Let me. So you are, you are digging too many things. All at the same level. So when you are looking for profit, there's none. So even Brother Paul was telling Timothy, if you want your profiting to appear to all, this is how to go about it. Praise the Lord. How many of you hope to make profit with discipleship? I want to see your hand up. Hallelujah. I want to tell you, there's profit in it. I have seen a bit of that. People stood and said, yeah, yeah, this thing cannot work. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, over a few years, they saw the profit in our own lives. And they're attracted. And they're coming and saying, we thought it wouldn't work. We thought there's nothing there. We thought you would suffer. We thought you would die of hunger. We thought this, we thought this, but this thing is working. And they say, how did you make it? And they're asking for a quick formula. But they didn't know that it is the same word that they did not continue in that we continued in. Do you understand that now? Now, if me and you started digging, we're digging, I'm digging here, you are digging there. If as I'm digging, you are digging, I'm digging. When you dug your own to 10 feet, say, no, it's okay. And I decide to go to 30 feet. And I begin to drink water. And you are begging for water. Is it because there's a special grace on my life? <laughs> eh? What was it? It's just to continue. It's continuity. It. If you continue in my word. So I want to stop because this is just a charge. For you to pray. Just a charge for you to decide again. Whether you want to be a disciple or not. You need to decide. We cannot be wasting our time. With unprofitable things in South Africa. You may find yourself on one spot. Because you keep digging here. Going here. Digging there. No, no. Will you decide this afternoon as we start again? Will you continue? Will you continue until your profiting appears to all? If you dig just like that and you leave it, you will blackmail what we are doing. You will make what we are doing one of those useless things that people started and failed. 
And they will start quoting. They say, that's how this man came the other time. And he started prophesying everywhere. And uh, everybody was going there. Where is it now? It has dried up. They think it is the same. No. No. If you continue in my word, your prophecy shall appear to all. That's the only way out. That's what Jesus told them. And as Jesus told them, those brothers went on and on and on and on. There came a state when some people decided that they would not continue. Do you remember? Some people, the Bible says in John chapter 6, that many of his disciples did not continue to walk with him. Do you remember? Now let me ask you. What did those ones become? They became nothing. It's only those who continued that became apostles. They're the ones that shook the generation. They're the ones that, <laughs> when the cripples saw them, they look at the cripples and say, silver and gold we don't have, but we have something. And that turned the land. Some of you are here and people are saying, when will you become the mighty evangelist? And they confuse you. So you stop digging. Then what do you do now? You quickly carry and go and start another and say, well, this man said he will make me a mighty evangelist. He will do this and all of that. Honestly speaking, you have been hopping up and down like that for the past 10 years. What have you become? You are still on the same level. Water doesn't come because of wideness. It comes because of depth. Will you continue? Until your profiting appears to all. And you see, as I'm talking, I'm not just talking to you, I'm, I'm, I'm even talking to myself more than you. You see, I want to continue. Because it's as I continue that the profit of this thing will appear. You know, it has not only appeared to Nigerians. It's beginning to appear to the people of the world. They were having a very top meeting somewhere. Somewhere in the U.S., I think. And they want to have a meeting somewhere in Japan. And they were sitting there and said, somebody needs to show us about discipleship. Suddenly, they just said, I just received a call. They said, Brother, we, we have heard about you and this. Will you please? So you see, this thing, he will get all over the world. Leaders that have traveled for years, they will come back and say, how do we do it? But you see, when the profiting begins to appear to all, you who stopped digging, who stopped continuing, you only put your hand in your mouth and say, ah, and we started together. Oh. <laughs> I was there. Look, but I'm still at this level. And there will be nothing for us to do for you that time, except that somebody may give you a small bucket of water for you to drink. Finish. We need to decide. If you continue in my word, then, then, are you my disciples indeed? And you shall know the truth. And the truth, which is the perfect law of liberty, will bring you into liberty in every area. And I can see some of you, you could be tired of discipleship because you have just dug a little, you dug a little and as we are packing rubbish, you say, look, is it every time they will keep finding rubbish in my life? I'm tired of that. I want to go to where they appreciate me. It's okay. It's okay. You can please quickly go to where they can manage with rubbish. You can go. But if you want and enduring 
water bearing capacity well whose profiting will appear to all then you can continue if you continue if you continue if you don't continue there's no hope for those who did not continue let's pray let's pray I want you to pray I want you to take a, a critical decision because we are starting this this disciples summit we need to make ourselves clear. How far am I going to go with this? How far am I going to pursue Jesus? How far am I going to continue? So that my profiting may appear to all. And if you want to continue, you must continue continuously. You see, the matter is not just to continue intermittently. You must continue continuously. It does not pay if you just continue once in a while intermittently. You dig a bit now, you stop. Then you went somewhere, you dig again. You say, okay, let's just continue digging this thing. No. You must continue continuously. There must be the continuity of continuing. Please pray and say, God, let me settle quickly. Oh, my Karabashiba, I know your profiting will soon appear, but you must continue. There is no blessing for the man who does here just a bit, does here just a bit, who goes here. And... No! You will prolong your life for too long that time. And people will keep wondering, what's wrong with you now? Why are you like this? Oh, Barabashiba. Makaraka shando robo skundara baba kondo robo shiba. Just talk to God the way you like to talk to God this afternoon. Talk to God for yourself. Talk to God for yourself. Marika sambo koshinda makando robo shiba. Oh, when Peter said, to whom shall we go? We know you are the one that has the word of eternal life. Peter didn't end as an ordinary man. He became what God wanted him to be because he continued. There were others who did not continue and they dissipated into nothingness. They were the ones telling stories. He was on our streets. He came, in fact, he slept in my house. Yes, you could be a big host to a man of God, but if you don't continue, it doesn't bless you too much. Pray and say, Lord, I want to continue. I want to continue until your profiting has appeared to all. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, this afternoon. Don't let this thing end as, as failed and abandoned wells. Don't let it litter the ground. Don't let me have abandoned discipleship. People that started, but they didn't get to the, to the point at which the fresh water is released. Don't let South Africa be littered with this kind of people who we say we were there. So we say, I even went to Nigeria. And they say, so what did you become with all of them? I say, well, Lord, Lord, you must help our lives until we become a blessing to this nation. Until we become a blessing to this sub-region. Until we become a blessing, oh God, to every segment of the land where you had wanted to use us. Let's lift up our heart now. Can you stand up, all of you? Stand up now and say, God, don't let this thing end as abandoned wells. Please pray. All of you, I want you to pray. Say, don't let this matter end as one of those Filled wells. Things that people started and didn't go anywhere. Ha! 
Mara kashando robo sumba barabashiba. Lika rabasando robo siba babashiba. Reko sabarabasando robo shiba. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Hirika sabayando robo suba. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Mm. Mm. Ah, ah, Lord, Lord have mercy on us. In the name of Jesus. Listen, brother, because we have come to a critical prayer. Do you not know there are even brothers who are like failed well? There are even preachers who started and it appeared as if they were going to cause the revival to sweep the land. But it failed because they didn't continue in my world. They were diverted into something else. They began to do something else. And the land is littered with such lives here and there. Nobody can dig them again because they have already finished. Will you pray? I want you to pray genuinely, brothers and sisters. If this is going to be an abandoned ware, may we stop it now so that we don't waste our time. But because God is faithful, you may think this is starting a little corner, but it has capacity to overwhelm the whole of the country. It has capacity to feed the land, to feed the land and to feed the region and to move into other continents. Will you pray and say, God, not an abandoned way. Not an abandoned world. Some of you have been part of abandoned worlds. Some of you have been part of things that started and didn't go anywhere. Some of you have been part of some programs that didn't become anything. Tell God. Tell God. You must help my life. You must help me. You must help me, oh God, until the prophet becomes evidence. Lord, please. Lord, please. 